A prominent pro-Palestinian activist, Omar Barghouti, has been barred from entering the United States. Barghouti was stopped at Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion airport and prevented from boarding his U.S.-bound flight earlier this month, despite having valid travel documents. He says the U.S. consulate told airline staff his entry had been denied by the U.S. Immigration Department, even though he's been traveling back and forth for years. Barkuthi has co-founded the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, or BDS, which tries to exert financial and social pressure on Israel until it complies with international law. Several U.S. states have introduced laws to hamper the movement, which Israel refers to as extremist and anti-Zionist. Well, Omar Barghouti joins us now from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Good to have you on the program. Omar, was there an exact reason that they gave you for why they weren't letting you go to the United States? Actually, they did not give any specific reason. They just said immigration issues, and they never explained what those issues were. Do you think for sure that this is about BDS? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, Israel is outsourcing its micro-repression of human rights defenders who are active in the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement for Palestinian rights. It's the first time they, that, that they outsource such a micro-level uh, uh, attack on BDS to the United States government, which is a xenophobic, right-wing, anti-Palestinian uh, government that is uh, completely complicit in Israel's crimes against Palestinians. Right. There was a congressman, Republican, from New York, Lee Zeldin, who said... And I quote, uh, the rise of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel hate throughout the world in our nation on college campuses and within the halls of Congress must be rejected. Barghouti's anti-Israel and anti-Semitic hate must not be tolerated, empowered or embraced. And I applaud the administration's denial of his entry to the United States. What's your response to the congressman? Uh, Israel's far-right regime and its far-right supporters in the United States are so desperate because of the BDS movement's growth. Its impact has reached mainline churches, trade unions, student governments across tens of campuses in the U.S. Many Jewish millennials have joined BDS, and this is something that really worries Israel's far-right regime. Uh, young Jewish people can no longer reconcile their liberal values with what Israel and Zionism stand for today. The siege of Gaza, ethnic cleansing in Jerusalem and the Naqab, uh, the continuous construction of illegal settlements, apartheid laws, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, this has led Israel to redefine to, to, to adopt a revisionist definition of anti-Semitism that focuses on opposition to Israel's policies and to Zionism. No one should conflate opposition to Israel's ideology and policies with anti-Jewish bigotry. The BDS movement is anchored in the Universal mm -hmm. Declaration of Human Rights. It rejects all forms of racism, including Islamophobia, including anti-Semitism. So Israel is trying to confuse those two issues and to say that opposition to Israel equals opposition to Jewish persons. And this is absolutely false. Right. At the same time, in parallel, Israel has become a, a kind of a, a poster boy for the anti-Semitic groups around the world, mm -hmm. from the White House to Bolsonaro in Brazil to Orban in Hungary to many other uh, uh, regimes that are very far right and very anti-Semitic. They're Israel's best friends in the world. Yeah. And just looking at BDS as it's grown over the years, especially over the past decade or so, as BDS has gotten bigger and bigger, you have chapters on, on campuses around the world from, from the West to the East to places like South Africa and so on. Is it difficult to control who claims to be BDS? And does this not make it easier for those who are anti-BDS to find stuff to use against you? A few examples. There were Facebook groups that were clearly anti-Semitic claiming to be BDS. Uh, in South Africa, there were those who claimed to be supporting BDS that took a, a pig's head and put it in the kosher section of Woolworths, right? So they were claiming to be BDS. They might not have been endorsed by you or BDS, by BDS leadership, but it's easy for Israel to say, you see, these people are anti-Semites. They want the destruction of Israel. They don't care about human rights. This is something dressed up as a secular human rights organization, but it's something more nefarious. Is that a, a challenge you have? Uh, not really. It's a propaganda challenge that Israel puts out. The global BDS movement is not 
a, a, a vertical uh, structure. It's very horizontal, true. It's very decentralized, that's absolutely true, but it has a leadership. The Palestinian BDS Committee leads this global movement, and the Palestinian BDS National Committee is the largest coalition in Palestinian society. We set the guidelines for the movement and the red lines for the movement. And some of those red lines have to do with racism, have to do with all kinds of discrimination, uh, anti-black, anti-Muslim, anti-Arab, anti-Jewish, uh, uh, and all kinds of discrimination are rejected by the BDS movement. So when a Facebook uh, 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 when a group claims to be part of BDS and puts out any anti-Semitic content on their Facebook, we contact them immediately and we tell them, either you take down the anti-Semitic uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. content and apologize about it and educate about our position against racism or you're no longer part of the BDS movement. We took that position against a group in Casablanca in Morocco uh, that's calling itself BDS Casablanca. We immediately issued a statement after warning them for a whole week that they are not part of the BDS movement, they have nothing to do with us, and we condemn the racism. So no, we don't take lightly any kind of mm -hmm. racism, including anti-Jewish uh, racism. Uh, but uh, as I said, Israel is in no place to criticize anti-Semitism anywhere in the world when it's a hub for the anti-Semites of the world. Right. The Israeli push in the war of ideas is to <clears throat> delegitimize the delegitimizers, as one Israeli academic told me. Who's winning in this war right now? Uh, Israel is delegitimizing its own regime of occupation, settler colonialism, and apartheid. By shifting so much to the far right, the next Israeli government will most likely include openly fascist parties. There are many fascist parties that aren't not, are not open, but it might include an openly fascist uh, uh, party. Uh, uh, Israel is losing the liberal mainstream. As it wins xenophobic far right regimes around the world, it's losing uh, the liberal mainstream. So Israel's own policy, its own shift to the far right is delegitimizing its own regime of oppression. It's revealing its true face to the world as an oppressive colonial regime. And that's helping truly BDS to grow uh, around the world. I think BDS is growing among all social movements, trade unions, academics, artists. Just the last couple of years, we saw many, many, many artists mm -hmm. join the cultural boycott uh, of Israel. Academics, uh, many, many student groups around the world, uh, many young Jewish groups are joining the BDS movement. Movement, and that worries Israel's far-right uh, regime. At the same time, they're winning the far-right. So they can congratulate themselves on winning uh, uh, such far-right regimes, but they're losing the liberal mainstream. Right. And when I look at your proposed itinerary, when you were supposed to go to the US, <clears throat> you were supposed to speak at different events, do activism, but you were also supposed to attend your daughter's wedding, as far as I understand. Did you miss your daughter's wedding? Yes, I did. My daughter's wedding was last Sunday, and I was forced uh, to miss it, obviously, by this entry ban. But I did all my public speaking events uh, uh, via Skype. So I did not miss my events at NYU, both campuses, Washington and New York, uh, my Harvard University, and crucially, uh, an unprecedented talk, my first talk at a synagogue in Chicago, Tzedek Chicago Synagogue, where I addressed the Jewish uh, uh, community in, in Chicago and spoke very frankly about our position on anti-Jewish racism that we rejected absolutely and on Palestinian rights and that there should be no conflation between advocacy for Palestinian freedom, justice and equality and opposition uh, to Jewish persons. There's absolutely no contradiction in that. And I think the absolute majority understood our message loud and clear, but that was a, a very important step for me to speak at the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, it's, I, it's very important to you to get your message across to the United States. Um, it sounds very dear to you and sounds like an important place in the culture war, if you like, to get your ideas out there. As things stand, we have professors who are being forced to commit to or being asked to commit to never endorsing BDS as a part of their job. We have more than half of the states which have anti-BDS legislation <clears throat> on the books. With that in mind, what's your message to the American people? Uh, I think the, uh, the American Civil Liberties Union said it very eloquently, said those anti-BDS laws adopted by some 27 state legislatures across the United States are reminiscent of McCarthy-era loyalty oaths. 
That's a very, very strong statement coming from the most important, the most influential liberal entity in the United States, the ACLU. Indeed, most libertarians, most human rights activists, most social movements around the United States view Israel's, Israel's induced anti-BDS legislation in the U.S. as extremely serious as an attack on the U.S. Constitution, the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which is the Free Speech Amendment. And they understand that, like McCarthyism in the 60s, the new Israeli McCarthyism in the U.S. will not stop at BDS. If they succeed with uh, suppressing free speech on Palestine, no one is safe. They will go after the black rights movement, the LGBT movement, the, the indigenous movement, the women's movement, uh, and any other movement that they deem uh, inappropriate. They will go after it to try to suppress its freedom of speech. And that's why we see many liberals across the U.S., even those who do not support BDS, defending the right to BDS. For example, Senators Bernie Sanders and Dianne Feinstein in the U.S. Congress have defended the right to call for a boycott of Israel to achieve Palestinian rights under international law. Omar Barghouti, great to have you on the Newsmakers. Thank you very much for joining us.